please let me record this without screwing it up for like the tenth time already. <sighs> What's up YouTube? Griever here and today we are going to be taking a look at this and more specifically uh, these silvery gray 3D printed pieces because this is going to be a review and look at the Strifle kit from Foam Demic. Now I've wanted to build kind of an HVZ blaster for quite some time, especially with the hope that God willing this year uh, I will be making it to End War. So I want something that is kind of uh, just my own zombie killing or specifically zombie tagging, uh, own personalized blaster. So, I went and I got the Strifle Kit because, mm, why not? Uh, also because I didn't get the Raven Kit because I don't have a Raven available to me, so, but that's besides the point. Anyway, what we're going to do in this video is, I'm actually going to put this over on the workbench and actually break it down so you can see all of the parts that do come with this particular kit. And I will also be showing you how easy it is to actually put it together in real time. Not including the cuts to the Magnus because, one, I don't have the time for it. Two, I don't have a spare Magnus to actually do it to. So, yeah. Let's just go to the workbench. Uh, we'll take a look at the parts, how easy it is to put together, and then I'll give you my final thoughts on this thing. Okay, so here we have the Strifle broken down into its components and also the parts so you can better see what the kit actually comes with. Now, I just want to point out real quick that the kit does also have, does include these side plates that are on the Strife. I just did not remove them because they are honestly, once they're in there, they're a real pain in the ass to take out. So those are not going to be coming out until I actually, you know, work on my Strifle proper. They, these pieces do come in two separate parts, and I don't mean like one side or the other. Um, they come with the gap filler portion here, and then also the Picatinny rail section of this as well. Uh, these have to be screwed onto the gap filler portion of it. So it is really kind of optional. You can either add them in or leave them off. Either way, it's gonna they'll still work the same. Um, but the rest of the pieces, uh, you get a sling mount fill gap here, which also has a raised rail to go along with the rail that will go on top of your retaliator barrels rail. You get the lower rail mount, which actually connects the Magnus to your retaliator itself. Uh, the bottom strife slide piece which is actually what will hold hold the back end of your magnus to the strife just basically kind of reinforcing everything and then you also get this little ring now you may be saying to yourself why well this as i throw it on the floor this ring is actually a spacer for the strife between to go between the strife and your retaliator barrel now unfortunately as designed by hasbro when the two are mated you get a lot of barrel wobble however with this tiny tiny little 3d printed uh ring you just put that in first lock your barrel in and there is no more barrel barrel wobble whatsoever so and again it's just reinforcing the structure that for you know for the build itself so it's honestly very nice and very welcomed so these are all the pieces for the kit now this is also the kit that uh campbell nerfworks uh developed uh it is licensed through foam demic which is again where i got mine so let's just assemble this real quick and i'll show you honestly how easy it is really to do so you'd start off by putting in your 
the side the side panels on here you take your sling mount filler here and you put that in now there are also screw holes all over this thing um you can screw this down if you want there is a spot for it up here um, however there really isn't a necessary need for it because once you have the retaliator barrel on and the top rail mount this is pretty much held very well into place also for the fact that once you snap it in it really isn't going anywhere unless you really kind of yank it out i want to say i think that is more likely uh for if you're going to do an extended picatinny rail along the top that that's really kind of more so what it's for um but you can also screw into it if you want to just you know really make sure it's not going there but trust me it's not then you will take the bottom mount here now this just slides right onto the bottom rail of the strife there is no locking piece on it so it just it's going to slide onto the rail but it's not going to stay in place basically once the build is together it's going to hold it in place and you will see these uh, screw holes on the side of it. That is to screw in your Magnus to hold it into place and, again, add more stability to the structure. I'll be honest, I don't have mine screwed in, um, mainly because the handle on my Magnus is so damn janked and you know jacked up and all. Um, I didn't really kind of see a need for it because honestly it holds together very very well with the screws on here or the the um, the mount that holds it to the retaliator barrel if I wanted to I could um, I just don't have the need for it at this given moment so that is why when if you see mine I don't have the screws there but you slide that on put in the spacer ring slide your barrel on and now we are ready to attach the magnus now you do need to do some heavy cutting on the magnus itself uh, you need to cut down the slide now you have to cut down the slide regardless unless the only way you're using this is you're popping your magazine out because the slide will go far far enough back that it will always hit the magazine and never be able to prime properly there is also with this kit an additional piece here that does i want to say i believe it goes over the magnus slide itself i am not using that particular piece because truth be told i really like the way the magnus slide works as is so i am not actually going to be doing that but you do have to make cuts on the handle and you also do have to trim off a little bit here uh, for more details on that one, I would definitely suggest going to check out Campbell Norfolk's installation video that he made for his kit. So, once everything is all trimmed down and ready to go in, you're just going to slide it right on back. And I'll be honest, I'm sure there's probably a little more here that I could trim off, but it is what it is. So, once it's in here, you're going to want to take the um i guess the right side of the bracket and just kind of fit it in now the way this works is these grooves that are in here are for the rails themselves so you just fit it against your i would say fit it against your retaliator rail and then once the magnus is in just kind of rest the magnus right on top of it i would suggest adding your screws first and get them started. So this way, once your sides are together, you just start screwing, just start screwing in, I would say start in the middle and just go until you feel the tension of the screw. Because remember also, this is 3D printed plastic. You don't want to over torque it because then you will crack something. And then once the middle's in, you're pretty much good for the ends at that point. And again, just screw until you feel tension. And the front, again, 
screw until you feel tension. And yeah, your Magnus is now on there. And as I had said, you could do the screws here if you want to. But I mean, with mine, I only have the three that are in the rail there. And this really isn't going anywhere. It's very solid. Uh, you could do these for your own sake of being. I'm not saying don't do it. I'm just saying I'm more likely than not won't be doing it. And now for the top rail to even everything out and make that more flush. Again, I added my screws in uh, prior, or actually I just didn't really unscrew them from when I had originally done them. And it just goes right over the rail and right here. Now, if you're someone who likes to use the iron sights on the retaliator barrel, that's fine. This will also work with the iron sight up. The front of this is actually designed to work with it either way. So I'm actually going to keep mine down because mine's going to have a sight. Um, you know, obviously it's just going to be awesomely tactical. So, but I'm not, that's the only reason I'm not leaving my iron sight up. And then again, just you screw it back together until you feel tension. And there you go. The strifle is, or the strifle kit is now all together. Um, I should have actually mentioned this earlier, and I probably will have thrown a note in there. But in case you missed that, uh, this kit does not come with hardware. It is only the 3D printed pieces. Um, you basically can use whatever spare Nerf screws that you do have. I thankfully have a very abundant supply of them from all the blasters that I've either destroyed, broke, stripped down for parts, whatnot over the years. So I have a very ample supply of them. Um, but yeah, you will need um, your own hardware for it. Honestly, to do what I did, you really only need six screws. You need three for the top rail, three for the side, or three for the bottom rail. I ha the side plates do take two each, and there are two for the Magnus itself, and then the one on top there. So that would be an additional uh, four, five, nine screws. So in total, it would be 15 screws to put all of this together. Technically, you only really need six. So that's it for the install process of this. So I'm going to give you my final thoughts on this kit as well as show you what the silhouette of my strifle is going to be because obviously I'm going to want to do this up but you'll get an idea of at least what my plans are for it so I'll see you in a moment okay so my final thoughts on the strifle kit from Fomdemix I mean I'm very happy with it the kit in of itself designed by Campbell Nerfworks is amazing this is a very solid kit it fills in all of the open gaps that would have been left if you just married these three things together. And also the fact that the top rail matches this rail here is beautiful. The, and I'll be honest, the cuts to the Magnus really aren't that terrible. It's just a matter of, you know, just taking the time to do them and do them cleanly, not like the crap job that I did. The print quality of these parts from Fomdemic is beautiful. I know when I, I did speak to Jade about this, and this is one of her favorite uh, filaments to actually uh, build parts in, which I got to say, I understand why, because it is a very, very nice gray, or I think it's silver. And, but I mean, over and all, the, there are no flaws in any of the prints anywhere. If... I would have to say, yeah, there, there really isn't. There's like maybe one or two things I can nitpick with, but over and all, these prints are beautiful. There are no flaws in them, no major issues with any of them structurally. It's just, this is all just beautifully crafted, and I'm very happy with it. So 
I'm going to throw a link down for this kit into the description if anyone is interested. I am not going to get anything out of it. I am just trying to help out a fellow community member. So go check out Foamdemic. Again, link will be in the description down below. So, and also, as I had mentioned while I was putting this together, I would show you what my configuration of a Strifle would be. And this is it. This is a stock that was going to be part of a demolisher build that I was going to do, but unfortunately that project has taken a severe back burner right now. It's already kind of painted up, so I really don't thankfully have to do anything with it. The only part that I do have to fix up is the stock release buttons. Uh, I had just painted over those after doing the gray vinyl dye over it because I didn't have red at the time. And so I'm going to actually clean those off and actually redo them in red because the rest of this is going to be the metallic purple, the charcoal gray vinyl dye, and the red vinyl dye that I tend to really, really, really like. So, but yeah, that's where this is eventually going to go. But that's going to be a project for another video. And... Thank you for joining me for this video, and as always, if you enjoy the content we put here on the channel, please throw us a like and subscribe. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think of my idea for a Strifle, and have you ever built one before? Let me know in the comments down below. I do honestly enjoy reading everyone's comments. And, oh, don't forget to click that little bell icon, otherwise you may not know when me and Arlene are doing our Salinas here on the channel. So, again, thank you all very much for joining us. I'll see you guys next time. Later.